Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this week's EMBN show. And by popular demand, we'll be talking about Roadfield's new Pinion MGU bike this week. Owen, what have you got? I've got some exciting updates from Bosch about their e-bike navigation system, which I genuinely was, yeah, very good. What else? The oh, bag? Uh, yes, yes. The bag. The bag. Don't forget the bag. Can't forget the bag. Right, well, to get things rolling, uh, hot news, Owen, is okay. I had a phone call from Phyllis Seaton at Poly UK this morning. Uh, it seems that they could be opening up a new UK hub, which is great news for all Poly owners yeah. and poly, potential Poly owners, because let's face it, if you're spending money on an e-mountain bike, you want to look at it, yep. you want to sit on it, yep. and you want to see where you're spending your money. Um, these bikes are actually pretty... They're coming in at like six to seven thousand pounds now, yeah, which yeah. is which I think is a oh wait, is, is hang a, on, it, yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, wow. But what I, what I want to talk to you about, right, is is the ability of someone to go and sit on a bike. Now, in the past, you'd get you, you know you get used to the mountain bike you ride, and you go and sit on your new bike, and it should you kind of you think it should feel like your old bike. However. With the advent of seat, uh, steeper C2 angles on mountain bikes, when you now get on a mountain bike or an e-mountain bike, yeah, yeah. it feels a bit more cramped, yeah, right? Yeah. So people are getting on these bikes thinking, oh, that bike's too small for me. Yeah. But it's not. I mean, it's all down to the, you know, the reach, the wheelbase, the down tube length. So I think, I think it's, it's increasingly more important for people to go and try bikes and sit on them before they buy which is why I think it's great that Polly are doing this. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think it's a really good investment for mm. e-bikes in the UK. Mm. But I think you're right. I think when the geometry, which, I mean, oh, you could argue that actually they might have done it before Mondraker. The they really did. slack well, angles uh, and folk, the steeper yeah, stuff. Yeah, folks, so Polly, uh, their, their Sony bike comes with an 81 degree seat tube angle, which means the weight distribution on the bike, especially for climbing, is great. Yeah. It doesn't take away uh, descending potential because you still have the wheelbase yeah, of the bikes. Yeah. But yeah, I think you could be right there. Yeah, I think they might have picked Mondraker to the really, yeah. really slack geometry. But but I think if you're coming off a more like normal, for want of a better word, e-bike or non-e-bike, and it's your first e-bike, I think the geometry is so different that, yeah, you'd, you'd probably get the bike delivered to you and then be like, oh, I'm not sure if I've got the right exactly. size. And then it's, so yeah. yeah, so the great news is Phil and his team, there's new year cab, so uh, if you try the bike, also things are on warranty, you can take the bike oh, back there, you haven't got yeah. to ship it to Europe. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bit of a snippet of information there. Uh, Bosch, Bosch yes. have got some new updates. They've yeah, got they a new anti-theft, which means you can actually log in if your bike is stolen. Hopefully your bike doesn't get stolen yeah, and it gets logged to the police station, right? Yeah, and it make it all there. You can create a police report from it, is my understanding. So that's really good. Plus, more navigation updates mm -hmm. to the, I pronounced it wrongly, but Kiox. 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 So Owen, let, let's just, <sighs> so we're going to call him Crinkly Coots from now on. So Owen is a newcomer to e-mountain bikes. He's not a newcomer to mountain bikes. He's been kicking around for years. Yeah, like an old penny. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kiox, new navigation updates on the Kiox. Yeah, which is awesome. I genuinely hadn't researched enough, which is really poor, that you could do turn-by-turn -turn navigation on it. Mm -hmm. Now you can do turn-by-turn, uh, -turn, plus you can put extra stops on your route, which seems awesome, to be fair. Coffee shops. Obviously. Bars. Possibly, yeah, pub at the end, exactly. <laughs> um, and there's also a digital e-bike pass, which shows you all the information about your bike and yeah, you can link other documentation to it, so upgrades and photos you buy, which seems like a really smart idea. It is. I, like I mean, that. Bosch have got lots of smart ideas. We'll actually be talking about some other Bosch stuff later in the, in the show. Uh, let's move on to then, to the Pinion MGU heart of the Roadfield RX 1000. 1000, hints that it's actually got a pretty big capacity battery in there, 960 watt hours. Shivers. Shivers, uh, 4.7 kilos. I'm gonna put my glasses on to look at some of the other detail. Uh, the peak power is 600 watts, uh, electronic shifting called Smart Shift, single speed chain, MX wheels, MX. 150 mil travel front and rear, full carbon. Oh, quite short, shorter travel then. Yeah, so the Pinion MGU, you guys have been saying, why do we not, why do we not feature Pinion MGU or any kind of bikes with a combined yeah, yeah. motor gearbox. Uh, and the simple answer, I've said this on a few previous shows, is that we've not actually ridden them in mountain environments. 
Um, but I, I'm a massive fan of road wheel bikes. Yeah. Um, I think they, they've got some fantastic innovation. It's not just the Pinion MG. I mean, such things as the Shimano bike, where you can actually have, you can you can have it either as a 60 newton meter bike or an 85 newton meter bike with the same motor. Okay, that's I mean, it nice. makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah. Makes sense, right? Yeah. I like it. Joey. Doesn't make sense. You just went 85 the whole time. Yeah. All you know, he's. Did you know that Joey is a is a, a drone lead holder? Is he? He's a drone lead holder. Is that something to do with Star Wars? Twelve gears. <laughs> uh, quick look at the angles on this bike. Head to angle 66. Seat to angle 74. 468 reach in large and a 445 chainstay. Uh, like I said, it's just one of a fantastic range of bikes from yeah. uh, Rotterdam, and um, it's great to see actually. You know steps are being made to get the uh, combined motor gearbox units out onto the yeah. mountain. What have we got, Owen? It's competition time. Competition time. Now, we're going to actually leave a link down below how you can win the prizes, which we're going to be discussing in the next few minutes. What have you got? Wow. Are you got the bag? Do you know what? I love that bag. It's awesome. Where'd you get that from? You know what, I love that bag. I've actually taken this bag on many mountain bike trips. Yeah. Uh, GoPro mount on the back. Yep. Uh, should we open it up? Yeah, yeah, do. There's up? goodies up? in there too. There is goodies in there. What have we got His name comes from ergonomics, if you haven't guessed already. Uh, um, well, let, let's talk ergonomics then. I mean, oh, what have wow. we got here? Get me a seat. I mean, the great thing about ergon is actually, and this is really, really important, especially. Oh, yeah, it is. It's huge. I mean, we talked about poly earlier and CT bangles getting steeper. Increasingly, we are getting components which are suited to e mountain bike use because when you're doing, you know, the motors are evolving, the geometry is evolving, you need a seat which holds you in the right place when you're climbing. So, Ergon are very much pioneers when it comes to uh, seating on e mountain bikes. This is the uh, mountain bike core prime comes in male and female, uh, different widths, and this there's so many features on this saddle. It's yeah. not just the kick in the tail. It's the fact that can I just grab yeah, that one? Yeah, you can grab that one. That's got the kind of yeah. yeah the the great thing about about e mountain biking is climbing tech terrain, and it's good to have that little bit of give in the. How can I demonstrate that? Well, I, I guess but it's not, hard to show, but, but if oh, can I ramble on saddles? Go on then. Right. You might go, oh, well, I can, reg I can ride my regular like mountain bike saddle on, on my e-bike. Well, yeah, but no, because the way that you're saddled yeah, but it, no. and the way that, especially with the really steep seat angles, the way that you'll rotate your pelvis or won't, and the way you'll sit in a different way, means that all those properties that make one saddle work on your acoustic bike mean that it probably won't be as good on your e-bike. So that's why you also these spend, are amazing. You also spend a lot more time sat down on an e-mountain bike. And, and and I actually use the seat to try and... <laughs> be careful I put this the right way. I use my... What are these bits called? Glutes. Glutes. I use my glutes to kind of search for grip. Yeah, so yeah. So like leaning into the bit there, leaning into there. Yeah, Joey's, yeah. Joey's trying not to laugh in the background there. <laughs> You know, you use you use the seat to hunt down grip. Yeah, you do. You use your glutes to hunt down grip. Yeah, to try and get that catching edge of the tire. Yeah. Uh, so, folks, you can actually win uh, one of these. Well, you can actually win one of a version of this seat. We'll, like I said, I'll leave the link down below. Uh, actually, should we talk about contact points? Indeed. What other contact point could there be in the bag? Grips. Ah, in gripping. the box down there. In the box down yeah, there. I'm going to put this this bag. I think you can win one of the bags, folks. I yeah, use this bag. You can actually put a battery in there. Yeah, proper. And it's got a back protector too. And a back protector. Yeah, we'll put the seat down. We're going to move on out to grips. There's another set in there as well. Yeah, there's a um, set. I'm I'm a bit obsessed about grips. You might be now. What? I don't use gloves. Um, the reason for that is. So I like the connection between my skin and the grip, especially in the winter, because I find when you've got a layer of material, it tends to move, whereas this is direct. It's there. Yeah. And I think that I actually changed my Ergon grips. I mean, Ergon are a partner on the channel, by the way, folks. That's why we're talking about this. And I, I, these are the, I don't even know what they're called, but they're, the, they're my favourite. What's great is they're always labelled. So Ergon's really nice. So it's like grip. <laughs> Downhill one, so there oh you go. Oh my god, didn't know that. This is the yeah, yeah. GD1 look. Yeah, there you go. The uh, thing is, I don't so look at stuff like that. So we've got GD1, this is the GFR. 
Yeah. I think what's really cool is, again, it's a bit like saddles. There's loads of subtleties. And actually, Martin was kind of saying, oh, well, they just sort of design grips. And actually, lots of the bike industry did just kind of go, cool, hi, pro rider, what would you like as your signature model? And they'd go, oh, here's some waffly bits, and there's some other waffly bits. Cool, there's a, we'll spam it out, there's a, there's a grip. Ergon, by their very name, decided to do a different approach. They employ, like, uh, sports... Uh, physiologists, all like full time engineers and engineers, boffins. Yeah, boffins. Boffins that don't like to be called boffins. Did you know that? Oh, we went to we had I a visit. They're going to be all right. We went. They didn't we, like boffins. We had a visit to CERN back in the summer, and oh, the yeah. boffins didn't like to be called boffins. They're scientists oh. and engineers, right? Scientists and engineers. Uh, so scientists and engineers at Ergon. So they design all the grips to actually do stuff. So that's why they've got relative. They've got guidance in terms of left and right because yeah. they're. They're symmetrical, mm -hmm. but also the orientation of where the grip is. Like they will make ramped edges and non-ramped edges on all these little subtle details. So, like a, all the bits on that grip. Like a tire. Yeah, like well, it is. And and there's me thinking that I'd be talking about grips when you've literally hijacked my grip. Yeah, sorry. Conversation, folks. There is a competition to be won. We're going to leave all the details down below. And uh, yeah, get stuck in, and we'll let the let you know of the winners in in the next few weeks. I think. Yeah. Uh, time now, folks, to see where you've been in the past few weeks in your e-mountain bikes. So this is very geographical this week. Ooh, well, like it's it. always geographical. Yeah, it's good. This yeah. is in the uh, Alentejo coast in Portugal. Ooh. Uh, Scott Patron. Ooh. Do you like a drop of Patron, dear? Yeah, drop yeah. of it. All right. Yeah. You know what Patron is right? Uh, tequila. You got it. Uh, Lake District. This is Nick in the Lake District. Lovely. Where is this? Arthur's Pike. That's very nice. It's not, you know, it's the kind of picture you just want to kind of like ponder over, isn't it? Yeah. Anyhow, and then we've got Alexandru in Romania in the Serrano Mountains. Do you think and that's then, where they do Romaniacs? On the hard Possibly. Enduro. You're right. getting distracted again. Sorry. Jimmy, uh, specialist lever comp in uh, Kingman, Arizona. Also very nice, like Arizona. Uh, do you know what? Before we get into um, some look back stuff, uh, yep. some feedback from you guys. Uh, do you Excellent. want to take it away, Owen? Yeah, certainly, yeah. Um, oh, it's a fashion advice one, so perfect for you, I think, Steve. So, Wayne McManus uh, is asking, Hi, Steve. Can you tell me the make and model of the green jacket you're wearing in the vid? Cheers. I he's can't. also got it listed here at 155, and then he's got a link, so we'll probably try and put that in. I can't. It's right here. Look, it's he does say green, though. Yeah, but it comes in a range. I think it comes in like six different colours. Six. This is the Gore Endure jacket. Um, it's it's fantastic for. I actually wear it with a base layer and this. And that's, uh, it. It, that's it. I mean, for insanely cold conditions, I'll wear a base layer, like a Prima Loft thingy, oh, yeah. and then this. But um, it's my go-to. Oh, nice, great. I like it. Next yeah. question. Next question, right. Uh, more fashion... Looking at Mondrake oh, no, not Neat. fashion, right, yeah. What kind of weight did this come in at? You're currently looking at Mondrake and Neat. No, we're actually looking at M1. M1 bike, which we featured oh, on the channel. Sorry. Me and Joey filmed it in the mud, and he laughed at me. Oh. Falling off. Uh, I might have seen a bit of that, yeah. where there was a lack of traction from shoes. The weight of these bikes starts, uh, depending on the spec you get, around about 16 kilos up to around about like 19 16? and a half. 16? Oh, we talked about the last time, didn't we? Yeah, I know, but I mean, light to mid power e-bikes are becoming the weight of, of mid, mid wow. travel mountain bikes. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, it's a question uh, about, again about gloves, which is interesting because we talked about it. It's all about the grips. Do That's I not? I don't, can... wear, I don't wear gloves. Do I not wear gloves in that weather? I, I do wear gloves on my road bike because the increased speed of a road bike, I'll wear some, especially well, in the and winter. You, and your hands are kind of a lot not, more static. Yeah, I like will fixed. wear gloves on my road bike in winter, like yeah. some good you know, proper kind of prima loft ones. It says here, explosive notes says, what shoes in these conditions? Why have my wellies broken? My Ooh. wellies are not broken. Now, the wellies I use are Le Chameau with a Michelin sole. Ah. However, and uh, me and Doddy actually did a video this time last year about why I wear wellies. And there's, I mean, if you look at the GMBN show a few weeks ago, it's all about this. Right with my wellies, I can hook onto my oh, pedals. Yeah. Well, um, like Sam Hilders, that's why he likes the however, impact because yeah. it's got that step in it. However, for many, many years, well, since mountain biking has been around, which yep. is which is what forty years, Basically. there has never been a winter mountain bike shoe stroke boot until now. Ooh, this is the new physique Nanak. Right, it's put your hand in there. <laughs> 
Oh, over that. Um, I've just expired. Those are amazing. I've started, That's fleecy. I've started wear, they're beautiful. I've started wearing the insanely light. It's got a, v, a Vibram sole on them. I think it's Vibram. Uh, it, yeah. It's a grippy sole. Um, and it's solid. It's easy to put on. And it's, it's oh, warm. Uh, and it's actually I've been walking around in puddles in it. So the days of my wellies, I, I'm really sad to say this, might be numbered. Moving on now to our next section, which is behind the scenes. And here we are behind the scenes ah. on the EMBN show. Ah, hello. Uh, I'll give you some, so folks, this is where we talk about things which have happened on set or on, on a location. Okay, nice. Uh, here's a funny one, here's a funny one. Matey boy, behind the lens there. The excellent, yeah, giving, it, giving it that, giving it that, giving it the king size talk. Really? Oh, I can ride up there. Really? I can ride up there. <laughs> hey, I can ride up there. That's easy, I can ride up there. Could he ride up there? This is what happened. Ooh. No, not in a million years. No! <laughs> I think, I think that's lunch. Lunch! Oh! <laughs> Damn it! Ma. So the question for you guys is, did he or didn't he? Mm. Answers on a postcard. This is a new section, folks. This is from the archive. It's funny, isn't it? Because I remember this time three years ago, possibly four years ago, I was with Brennan Fairclough, Ollie Wilkins, and Bernard Kerr. I kind of, sometimes this time of year, I get a bit low. Oh, yeah, no, but, that's, but yeah, then same here, yeah. I remember going to the Surrey Hills, all of a sudden, it's like, I mean, it's, you know, the days get shorter. It's some, yeah. Yesterday was a particularly bad one. It was cold and it was sleety. And if it wasn't for these shoes, I'd have been off. Yeah. Anyhow, we're going back to the archives. This time a year ago, we had a video which was the best e-mountain bikes of 2023. Oh, we nice. shot it in 2022. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's almost like two years ahead, but two years behind. Yeah. But yeah, throwback, yep. Yeah. Uh, so I've, I've been watching it. Yeah. To, you know, just to school up, because I'm such a newbie. Yep. Uh, which is great, right? Well, yeah, you've got to. No, yeah. it's really yeah. exciting. It's exciting to, yeah, just keep that stoke and learning of stuff. It's good. Stoke. <laughs> to, to tell me about the stoke. What do you want to know? It's about? high. I want to know. What I do you want to know? What do you want to there know? There was much hype about Rocky Mountain, and they're in the video right. because they've got their own power unit, and it's like sort of high pivot with an idler, well, which is so on trend. I and I'm think, surprised there's not more yeah, eaves with that. I think, yeah, it's funny. You funny you picked up on the Rocky Mountain of all the bikes. Um, the thing is, what we're talking about, what was happening a year ago was, yeah, the Rocky, we were, we were in, actually in uh, Verbia e-bike festival. Oh, nice. We, we were yeah, talking yeah. about the Rocky Mountain. We were talking about all those bikes, all fantastic bikes. Yeah. Lots of those bikes haven't really, you know, they haven't evolved. There's not been a massive step change in, okay. in, in the past year, which isn't a bad thing. There's been like a slow e evolution. And that really gets me, actually, when people talk about things being obsolete, they're not obsolete. They're just like tiny steps of improvement of what happened with bikes. Yeah, yeah. Some, I mean, the mountain bike industry doesn't always take forward steps. Sometimes the mountain bike industry, as you well know, takes backward steps. Yeah. We won't go into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain, do you know what? It was the fastest bike seven years ago. Oh, wow. It is still the fastest e-mountain bike on the market on technical climbing. Wow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Still, it's still many seconds ahead. So oh, it's right. a, that's a good one okay, to pick so, up. Okay. Um, Tom, we're getting ahead though. Yeah. I do remember. I rode the. I mean, you guys ask me about the. Ask us, sorry, about the uh, combined motor gearbox yeah, units many yeah. times. I rode the Vallejo drive. Vallejo. I had a lot of work to do. Oh. <laughs> Room, lots of opportunity for improvement. I think so. I, I, I'm trying uh. to be as nice as possible here, right. which comes back to my you know, whole discussion. Why, why do I not kind of endorse or suggest these things? Because I genuinely don't think lots of them are they're not there ready yet. For, they're not ready yeah, for the okay. mountain. So, yeah, I was hoping Vallejo would have improved or would have taken more steps. So, as as it happens, it's Pinion which have taken yeah. the biggest steps in the in the past year. But lots of other fantastic bikes on there. Yeah, I mean uh, Norco site. That Norco looks, site again feels super Nor interesting. Norcos. I mean, they were ahead of the curve. They had. They were one of the first to have 900 watt hour batteries. Oh wow! Yeah, they went straight yes, to the big, they big, did, big, big, big they batteries. Did. And lots of people forget that. Yeah, they they were kind of leaders in that respect. So well, I'm, nice to look back. Yeah, uh, I was just thinking that they hadn't got a high pivot, which is interesting. Where are the high pivots? But maybe that's a whole other topic. A, a topic which is let's not even bother going there. 
OK, it's bike vault time. Uh, kicking things off is the hybridizer. A name that I've not heard of, but that doesn't mean it's not a good bike. It's interesting features. High pivot, which we were just talking about. Interesting. I'll leave it. I mean, I think your, your words a second ago, it looks like some, a villain off a James Bond film. Well, there's the speedboat there too, so it is, <laughs> there are Bond villain vibes. And what about the nice or super nice vibes? We will say nice. Really? Come on, that's got to be super nice. Well, he hit it first, he hit the buzzer first. Uh, next up is, can you pronounce that name there, please? Uh, Doddy. Why not? Uh, I'm afraid we don't know your name because we can't pronounce it. Uh, uh, Ellie Brautsky. Uh, Mondrega Crafty. Uh, oh, it is from Ellie Bedrowski. Uh, so, well, location is somewhere. Okay. I think it's super nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, Good. And so is this old bear from Stephen in Ooh. Houston, Texas. They're nice. It's a soup. I really like the colour yeah. of that. That's super nice, isn't it? Uh, and finally, folks, this is Gary's Giant Trance in Holt, Michigan. Very nice. Good choice, Gary. Uh, folks, thanks so much. Send us your bike vault pictures in. I love looking at the bike vault. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's good to see what's out there. OK, uh, what's been going on in the social this week? Uh, first of all, this is Paul Stamets, who's a mushroom forager. I, I had to Google him because I'm not. And into so, the go on, you Googled Paul Stamets? Yeah. He's he, not just any old mushroom forager, is no, he? No, he's not. He is, yeah. <laughs> he's probably wor a world leading mushroom forager. I would say so, yeah. And he goes mm -hmm. foraging with his special lever. Yeah, which is super cool. Which is very cool. Uh, um, what kind followers of mushrooms? I mean, um, uh, psychobillins or, you know, standard mushrooms? I don't know. Some, uh, some fly agarics? I think all of the mushrooms. I think he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, look at this edit here from Brink. Now, you talked about Stoke earlier. This is proper Stoke going oh, on it here. It is, yeah, much Stoke. There's yeah. much Stoke going on here. And yeah, then lots. And then finally, some interesting uh, bike check procedures happening over at the World E-Bike Series. So, some great social posts there. Paul Stamets, though, what a man. Yeah, that's amazing. What yeah, a man. Super. Uh, me and Joey bumped into some mushroom foragers in the... Uh, um, Alpi Maritime. Oh. Yeah. Nice. And, what, and they, they were foraging for nice mushrooms or just nice Very, mushrooms? No. <laughs> <laughs> a man of experience. No, none. None whatsoever. <laughs> and Got that, my inhaler and that's it. And that is it for this week's EMPN show. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to join you next week as well. Hopefully. Uh, let us know your thoughts of the new Roteville bike uh, and also check out Polly's new uh, UK hub. <laughs>